Hey everyone, in this video we're going to solve this differential equation using power series. So this DE can be solved uh, using other methods really easily. So uh, power series is really a, a last resort. I think of it as a last resort. Um, it's longer, it just takes a long time to do it. So let's go through the steps carefully so you see how it works. So step one when you're doing power series is you start by letting y be equal to the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity of c sub n times x to the n. So we'll assume that there is a solution to this differential equation uh, in the form of a power series centered, centered at zero. And now we just have to plug this into the DE. So we have to take derivatives. So let's take the first derivative, so y prime. Now when we take the first derivative, we're going to start at one. And I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, and then this c sub n is constant, so it hangs out. Then you just use the power rule here, right? This is a number, so it stays there. So you bring the n down, so you get n times c sub n, and you subtract one. So let me explain why we started at 1. It's a little bit in tricky and important. So if you take this series here and you plug in 0, you would get c to the 0, x to the 0. Then you would add. Then you plug in 1, so you get c1, x to the 1, etc. What we care about is the 0th term. c to the 0, x to the 0 is just c sub 0. It's a constant, so when you differentiate it, it's going to go away. So basically, the 0th term goes away when you differentiate, and that's why we have to start this at 1, okay? Then you do it again, right? Take the derivative again, so y double prime. And the same thing is going to happen here, right? If you plug in 1, let's go ahead and do what we have time. So this is 1, c sub 1, x to the 0. So that's just c sub 1. So if you take that derivative, well, that's 0. So the first term goes away this time, so now you start at 2. Okay? And then everything is okay. Now, th these are constants. They hang out. So you put the n minus 1 in the front. So it'd be n, n minus 1. Yeah, n n minus 1, c sub n, x to the n minus 2, because we subtract 1. So that's the first step, right? You write down y, take the derivative, and when, every time you differentiate, you just shift up one time, right? So 1 and 2. Now we're going to plug it into our DE. So we have y double prime. So that's this piece here. So I'm going to write it over here. So we have the infinite sum, n equals 2 to infinity, okay, n, n minus 1, c sub n, x to the n minus 2. So all we've written here is the second derivative, right? So that's just the second derivative. I'm just plug, writing it down plus, okay, plus, and then we have this infinite sum here. This is a really nice problem. It's a good, like, first example of the solution. It's really pretty. Uh, it's a good, good example. C sub n, x to the n, and then this is equal to 0. Okay, so that's just y, right? That's just y. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Now, when you get here, the goal is to combine these, right? The thing is, you can't because these numbers are different, right? Also, you want these exponents to be the same. So what I usually do in this next step, always, no matter what, is just make these all k. So you just call this k and set it equal to n minus 2. Always, just take whatever's here and call it k, okay? Uh, then solve for n. So you add 2, so you get n equals k plus 2. And it's not really necessary to do it here because you're just going to replace the n's with k's. But I like to do it, so it's k equals n, so n equals k, right, solving for n. All right, now let's go ahead and rewrite everything in terms of k. So let's see, we have the infinite sum. When n is 2, k is equal to 2 minus 2, right? 2 minus 2 is 0, so k here is 0. You're going to infinity, okay? And then n here is k plus 2, so replace n with k plus 2. And this would be k plus 2 minus 1, so that's just k plus 1. And this would be c sub k plus 2. And this would be x to the k, because n minus 2 is k. Let's check that. n is k plus 2. n minus 1 is k plus 2 minus 1. That's k plus 1. c sub k plus 2, x to the k. It looks good. In here, all we're doing is replacing all of the n's with k's. So we're OK. So this will be plus infinite sum, k equals 0 to infinity, c sub k, x to the k, and that's equal to 0. OK, so so far. So good. Now when you get to this step, you want to combine the sums, but you can only do that if these numbers match. In this case, they do. This example was easy. I picked an easier one on purpose um, so that we could save some time. So now we can combine these. Let's just pretend that this was like a 1 here. How, what would you do? What you would do then is you would plug in 0 here and then start both sums at 1 and then combine them. Maybe later I'll make another video where we do that. But in this case, they, they're both at 0, so no big deal. You can just, you can just combine them. So let's do that. We have the infinite sum as k runs from 0 to infinity. Bracket, I'm using a bracket this time just for clarity. 
So we have this, so k plus 2, right, k plus 2, k plus 1, c sub k plus 2, okay? I'm going to pull out the x to the k and put it over here. So plus c sub k, that's this one here, okay? And then we have x to the k, we're, we're pulling that out, okay? We're pull, pulling that out. And that's equal to 0, that's equal to 0. All right, so again, step 1, you call it y, take the derivatives, right? And always shift up, plug them in, we got here. When you get here, you call this k, you call this k, you solve for n, you make the substitution, and then the best case scenario is this one, right? Because both of these infinite sums start at the same number. They both start at zero, so you can go ahead and combine them. That's all we did here, right? This is here, and, and we just pulled out the x to the k. This is equal to zero, therefore, all of these coefficients are equal to zero. So that means that k plus 2, k plus 1, c sub k plus 2 plus c sub k is equal to zero. And this is 4. This part's really important. So you just take this, set it equal to zero, but this is super key. This right here, k equals zero. You have to specify that, right? So you're going to need this. We're going to need this. And some of the harder problems, k will be like 3. Oh, that, that's a lot more work, right? That, that's, that complicates things in a major way. Makes the problem a lot longer. This one's easy because it starts at zero, and you'll see it. it just all falls into place. It's like magic. When you get here, after you do this, always solve for the one with the biggest subscript, okay? So here you have k plus 2 that's bigger than k. So solve for c sub k plus 2. So to do that, we'll subtract c sub k and then divide by this, okay? So we're going to subtract c sub k, divide by this. So we'll get c sub k plus 2 equals negative c sub k over this stuff, k plus 2, k plus 1, right? So k plus 2, k plus 1. And that's for k equals 0, 1, 2, etc. So I'm out of room, I'm going to have to erase, but I think we're good up here. So this is what we have. We have this, and it's true for that. We're going to use this to find the solution. Uh, so let's keep going. So I'm going to erase all of this, okay? And I'm going to write this down up here, up here, again. So we have, I'm going to keep this, because we're going to refer to this later. So I'm going to write this up here. So c sub k plus 2. So we have it. We're going to use this. This is negative c sub k, k plus 2, k plus 1. And this is true for k equals 0, 1, 2. Some people call this a recurrence relation. That's what you can call that. You can call it whatever you want. But we're going to use this now to get the answer. So how do we do this? Well, there's two approaches we can take okay, that I know of. One is the direct approach. That means we're just going to take this number, and we're just going to these numbers and just plug them in and look for a pattern. That's what we're going to do in this problem. Uh, the indirect approach, this is a name I made up, is something else. Maybe I'll make another video um, where, where we use that. But in this case, let's just take the direct approach and we're just going to plug in numbers, okay? So the first number we're going to plug in is zero. Notice I wrote it down. Um, that's just for me, so I don't mess up. If I don't write it down, it's I, I mess up. It's a good idea to write it down. So k is zero, so that means we're going to get c sub two, right? c sub two. That's going to be negative c sub zero. Just be really careful here. It's so easy to mess up. 0, and then this is, so this is 2, and this is 1, so 2 times 1. You want to look for patterns. 2 times 1 is 2 factorial. You say, well, yes, yes. You want to think about patterns when you're doing stuff like this. Always be on the lookout for patterns when you're working with these problems. So 2 factorial. So when do we stop? When we think we have the answer. C sub 3. <laughs> Let's keep going. Oh, 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 C sub 3. I should be really pro here. Let me write k equals 1. That's how we got C sub 3. So 1 plus 2. See, if you just write down C sub 3, you have to think about what k is. Oh, k is 1. And so you're thinking about it, which is fine, but if it's on the board, it's a little bit easier not to mess up. So k is 1, so we get negative c1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. That's 3 factorial, right? So that's negative c1 over 3 factorial c. c3 gives us a 3 factorial. c2 gives us a 2 factorial. They're both negative, though. We, we, we should keep going a little bit more, see if we can see something some type of pattern. When k is 2, we get c sub 4. So that'll be negative c sub 2, right? Negative c sub 2. And k is 2, so we get 2 plus 2, which is 4, 2 plus 1, which is 3. Now check this out. We know what c sub 2 is. It's right here. c sub 2 is this, right? c sub 2 is this. So I'm going to plug it in here. So if you plug it in, negative and negative is positive, right? So we're going to get c sub 0. And we get 4, 3, 2 factorial. That's 4, 3, 2, 1. That's 4 factorial, right? Beautiful stuff. It's 4 factorial. Let's do k equals 3. When k equals 3, we get c sub 5. So let's see what that gives us. c sub 5, um, well, k is 3. 
So negative c sub 3. So k is 3. So we get 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 plus 1 is 4. And now we're looking for c sub 3 here, c sub 3 here. So negative and negative is positive again, right? So we're going to get c sub 1, 5, 4, 3 factorial. That's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's 5 factorial. So c sub 1 over 5 factorial. We could do one more. Uh, we don't really have to, I think, at this point. Uh, I'll do one more. When k is 4, uh, that's going to be c sub 6. Uh, so c sub 6, so see k is 4, so we get negative c4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 4 plus 1 is 5. Uh, c sub 4 is here, okay? So it's already negative here, so it's going to be negative c sub 0, 6, 5, 4 factorial. That's 6 factorial. This is negative c sub 0, 6 factorial. A lot of thinking. I have to think really hard when I do these. Most people do. You have to think. It's really easy to mess up. Um, all right, so I think we're good here. This looks like it's going to be some type of like exponential or sine or cosine. I'm, it's going to be a sine and cosine. If, you've, if, you know, if you're watching this video, you probably know how to solve this in like 30 seconds using the auxiliary equation. Um, so this should be a sine and a cosine, and we can see that the pattern is emerging. So now we have these. So now we're going to write down the answer. Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to use this, right? We're going to use this. I'm going to erase this here, and I'm going to write it down again, okay? And I'm going to erase this. And we're going to write the answer down up here. So y is equal to the infinite sum. So writing it again. Right? That's what we started with. That was our original assumption. And if you plug in the numbers, like if you plug in 0, you get c sub 0, x to the 0, which is 1, so c sub 0. If you plug in 1, you get c1x. You plug in 2, you get c2x squared. You plug in 3, you get c3x cubed. Let's keep going. c4, x to the 4. c5, x to the 5. c6 x to the 6 plus dot dot dot, right? It goes on forever. It's an infinite sum, so it's important to have those dots there. So what's c sub 0? We don't know what c sub 0 is, right? We don't know. So c sub 0 is c sub 0. Uh, what's c sub 1? We don't know, so that's going to be c sub 1. I just realized something, something interesting. Earlier I had mentioned the uh, indirect approach, so I'll explain that at the end of the video. This is a really good example to explain why it works. Um, c2 is right here, right? So that's this. So we're going to replace this with negative c naught over 2 factorial. So this is negative c naught. You can write it like this. You can write it as negative c naught x squared over 2 factorial. Right? Same thing, right? Same thing. c3 is right here. So this will be minus c1, c1 x cubed over 3 factorial. I could have put the 3 factorial there. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's too late. But you see how it matches. It kind of looks like a sine and a cosine. And then here, now, C4, that's a plus. That's a plus. So plus, I'll write it this way this time, C4 over 4 factorial. Doesn't really matter. It just seems easier to write it like that. Uh, and then the next one's plus again, so it'll be C1 over 5 factorial. And then the next one is minus. The next one is minus, right? So C sub 6 is minus C sub 0, 6 factorial. So minus c sub 0, 6 factorial, x to the 6, plus dot, dot, dot. All right, I'm going to erase all of this. And then the magic is going to happen here. So we can pull out c sub 0. Check it out. So c sub 0, parentheses 1, minus x squared over 2 factorial. So check, check. Oh, look at this. Plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial. So check. Minus minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus. We pulled out all the c sub zeros, or c naughts if you want to say it that way. Now we'll pull out the c1s. So c1, so we get x, minus x cubed over 3 factorial. It's really beautiful, really, really amazing. Um, and then plus, this will be x to the 5 over 5 factorial. This one should be minus, but it's not on the board, so it says plus, minus, plus. And then so here we get to write down y. So this is y equals c sub 0. You only have even powers of x here. So if you remember, cosine is an even function. So this here is the Maclaurin series for cosine. So this is cosine x. You only have odd power. Sine is an odd function. Easy way to memorize it. So this is the Maclaurin series for the sine function. So plus c1 sine x. And that's the final answer to the differential equation. So I had mentioned earlier the, the indirect approach. The direct approach is what we just did. It's just plugging in the numbers, okay? 
The indirect approach is when you play a game with these. Check this out, just a quick aside before you stop the video. These are like your arbitrary constants of integration. So C sub zero and C sub one from the power series actually end up being your arbitrary constants in the problem, right? So it's really, really cool. So you can manipulate this, check this out. If you, can, if you call this Y1 and you call this Y2, if you were to pick, if you were to make this up, if you were to pick these as choices, what would happen here, this would go away and you would get, you would get Y1, so you'd get the first answer. Then you say, hey, you know what? How do I get this one? Well, if you wanna get this one, you pick this, right? And then this goes away and then you just get Y2, you see that? So if you do this, if you make the first one one and the second one zero, boom, boom, you, you get y1, right? So you get cosine. If you make the first one zero and the second one one, boom, you get the second one, you get y2, you get sine. So we could have done this, then plugged in the numbers and we would have gotten cosine, then done this, then plugged in the numbers, then we would have gotten sine. You might say, why in the world would you wanna do that? You're doing twice the work. Yes, yes, that's true. Uh, but sometimes there is no pattern or the, or the pattern is really hard to see. So sometimes uh, this, this approach uh, is beneficial. Maybe at some point...